Joining us now is Ojinika. Oji, with stories trending around the world. Hello, Jinx. Right. Good morning. Happy Friday. Friday. TGIF, the best day of the week, as always. I can see I'll you dancing. My weekend dance. Are we going dancing this weekend? Uh, why not? Yeah, why not? Actually? <laughs> That'll be fun. Good morning, Rufai. How are you? Morning, Oji. How are Love you? Love your haircut. Thank you. Always. Thank you, Oji. Bless yeah. you. Happy weekend. You always say that, Kobe. 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 Yeah, I know. You taught me that. Don't mind Dr. Bati. It's a, it, you know, some people call it a mohawk as well. Well, all right. Good morning to you viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In the United States, media mogul Rupert Murdoch announced on Thursday that he was stepping down as chairman of Fox and News Corp with his son, Latlan, to head both companies in a memo to employees. Murdoch said the time is right for him to take on different roles. The 92-year-old mogul launched his Fox News in 1996. It is now one of the most watched TV news channels in the U.S. Then, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky received a standing ovation at the ongoing UN General Assembly on Thursday. Zelensky, in his speech, which focused heavily on the danger Russia poses to the world, argued that other common challenges such as climate change can only be properly addressed when the world unites to end Russian aggression against his country. Weaponization must be restrained. War crimes must be punished. Deported people must come back home and the occupier must return to their own land. We must be united to make it, and we will do it. Slava Ukraini. In Nigeria, the deputy governor of Edo State, Philip Shwaibu, on Thursday, apologized to the governor of the state, Godwin Obaseki, and asked for forgiveness. Shwaibu fell out with the governor over his ambition to contest the forthcoming governorship election in the state. The rift led the deputy governor being moved to another office outside the government house. I will use the medium too to appeal to Mr. Governor, if there's anything that I don't know that I've done, please forgive me so that we can develop our state together. Under sports, world champions Argentina strengthened their grip at the top of the FIFA World Rankings in its latest list on Thursday after beating Ecuador and Bolivia in their 2026 World Cup qualifiers earlier this month. France, who lost to Germany in a friendly last week, retained second place position, followed by Brazil in third place, while Senegal remained the only African country in the top 20 list. <laughs> Finally, in New York, a massive billboard in the middle of Times Square displayed images of the late singer Mubad with the words, will be remembered forever. Mubad, legends are never forgotten. The death of the singer at the age of 27 under controversial circumstances ignited the hashtag justice for Mubad among his fans and the music community who trooped out in their numbers on Thursday to stage a memorial procession and pay their respects to the singer. Everybody across the globe is honoring Mobad, including that beautiful billboard. May his soul rest in peace. Yesterday we saw, um, you know, his fans troop out. I mean, across the states, even in the south, there was a, a protest of Mobad as well. But you know, there's the story that happened last night. The police went out there and they tear gassed the people that came out to honor Mobad. Let's take a look at that video uh, before we uh, discuss. See, see, see. Yeah, person, they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah,
vigil was mm. over. They told everyone to go home and they asked, um, you know, uh, the people to leave the scene. But then protesters gathered at the Lekki toll gate. I, where the police says they were not sure what they were doing. I think that you said that there was a, a statement that the yeah, police then, released, then released saying that, released. you know, there were people taking some drugs, hard drugs, uh, Indian ham at the toll gate, and that's the reason. But I mean, <laughs> what, is there a curfew? in Lagos. I mean, what, what is this reason? Were they doing anything harmful? You could hear that lady saying, we came for a peaceful protest and they tear gas us. Rufai, could you? So I think to a large extent, we have not solved the problem of relationship between community, society, and the police. And we must work on this. If we don't work on this, we don't have a society. The police claims, we told them, in fact, they had, I was also seeing a video where the police was telling them to leave, to leave, to leave, to leave. Because if we have this police, society, community relations, and there is trust, I don't see any reason why it should degenerate into this. Mm -hmm. Because I've also seen a video where somebody was hurt in the leg. Yes. Where they were scampering for lives. It's supposed to be a peaceful procession. I know the police will say, okay, yeah, the lucky toll gate and answers bring back all the memories. But should it get to this extent that people are not beginning to scamper with tear gas and all of that? That's always the challenge. Even if you look at it, the memorial for answers, this was what it degenerated yes. into. You remember the case of that, uh, of, uh, that uh, the taxi driver that was manhandled, that somebody went to court on his behalf, that even police were told to pay compensation should we need to get to this level mm. so what is the mechanism of management of situations like this that it will not degenerate into scampering and tear gas and injury yes because this just blights all the person and the question is why lagos we had processions in other parts of the country didn't we did this get up to this level yeah uh, I, I'd like for you to quickly read out that statement you were trying yeah, to read It's a very long me. statement. Just, just pick out some, yeah, yeah. some points from there. What he had said was that they had an agreement with the organizers of the procession, and they had agreed that they were going to use Muriel Kola Park. Now, after the procession and the concert was done, which we saw videos and a report by Ikena, um, we, we saw that some people then decided to go and protest at the Lekki Toll Gate. And of course, because of the history of the place, and um, you know the well, what it looked like on really behavior there. The police said that. Let me read what um, Benjamin Hundeni said. He said that um, in fulfillment of their mandate to protect life and property, maintain law and order, and prevent crimes, they adopted the least harmful method of crowd dispersal, following the failure of verbal persuasion the use of tear gas, and not a single live ammunition was fired. They said that they told the people at the toll gate to disperse peacefully. Um, they had mentioned that um, they were met with defiance, both in words and action. At this point, all lanes in and out of Lekki had been totally blocked. I experienced that traffic because I was out yeah. last night. Okay. So they explained themselves and said we should, you know, people shouldn't push out the wrong, wrong narrative. I think it's important to say that some of the organizers have come out to say that yes, indeed, they had an agreement to the police and that the police pro um, provide protection for them in you know, um, the procession and then finally arriving at um, Muriel Konla Park. But also to say that some people wanted to then take it a bit further, you know, do a, a peaceful protest. There is no law against a peaceful protest. Yes. However, there is, um, the police will respond if they feel that there's a threat to life and property, which is what they said they did. Well, let's continue on what's trending. Investigative journalist David Houdin, who has been critical of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's emergence as president of Nigeria, made a passionate plea in a video posted on X, claiming that his asylum in Ghana has been revealed and as such may become a target to extradition by the Nigerian government. Well, let's take a look before we come back for a discussion. They wrote a letter to the Ghanaian government accusing me of um, apparently aiding terrorism by supposedly um, revealing the locations of soldiers and apparently um, I was also guilty of treason, whatever that means. The latest tactic apparently is to lean on the Ghanaian government um, and accuse me of having apparently sabotaged an ECOWAS mission and in, in, in so doing um, basically uh, compromised the block security of the ECOWAS region, in which case Ghana being itself an ECOWAS member, is then obligated to um, cancel my asylum, to revoke my refugee status, 
and to and to revoke my Ghanaian passport. I want to urge the Ghanaian president to resist the temptation to allow Nigerian president to push Ghana into breaking international law. Um, I obviously don't need to mention that there's a law called the law of refoulement, which um, forbids the um, the um, illegal repatriation of political refugees back to the country that they fled from, where they are going to face you know persecution. It's very well known that if for whatever reason I were to be returned to Nigeria, I would not survive it. This is not a secret. Well, all right. The story is out there. We all know that David Houdini has been quite critical of the Tinubu administration. And, you know, he has made a plea about repatriation. Uh, you know, we can't talk further on this, but I know that the story has been trending on social media. So I thought it was uh, good to highlight that. But we'll take another story. Reactions have trained President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's statement in which he appealed to Nigerians in the diaspora to return to Nigeria, emphasizing the nation's current state of growth and progress. Tinubu made the appeal while speaking during a presidential town hall meeting in New York, organized by the Nigerians in the Diaspora Commission on the sidelines of the 78th session of the UN General Assembly. Tinubu highlighted the need for a change in mindset in order to grasp the abundant business opportunities available in Nigeria. He also expressed pride in the achievements of Nigerians excelling in various fields abroad, urging them to contribute to Nigeria's development. I mean, there have been a lot of reactions, Dr. Abati. I wouldn't have time to take all the reactions, so I'd love for you to respond to this. I mean, I thought that that was a good statement. He's not the only one that has, you know, talked to the Nigerians in the diaspora. His Yawo, his wife, Remy Tinubu, I was going to take that story earlier this week where she talked about the fact that these people should come back home and that uh, Tinubu will not have been president if he was still abroad. Dr. Abati. Yes, uh, Mrs. Solu Remy Tinubu said that. Uh, before now, uh, at a forum organized by Nigerian governor's wives. We seem to have so many, uh, you know, governor's wives uh, who went to attend uh, <laughs> on God 78. <laughs> but now the president is also uh, echoing the same statement at a town hall meeting with Nigerians. And he's saying that, look, the situation at home is different under his watch, and that there should be a change of mindset. And that he himself had once lived in the diaspora and that he came back home. So more or less, husband and wife, you know, saying the same thing. Just to inspire Nigerians who may have jackpot, jackpot to jackpada, <laughs> as they say. <laughs> yes, you know, there's something they call jackpot when you uh, leave Did the country. Did you make jackpada up? Ja no, jackpada. <laughs> it's a very jackpada common place. Jackpada come back. Come back home. Well, yeah, I so you this was, uh, you know, from the president and the first lady, yeah. a jackpada uh, <laughs> intervention on the sidelines side of the hunger uh, 78. However, the president says something which I think is instructive, which I consider to be an open criticism mm. of uh, the Buhari administration. He said, you may have been frustrated, you know, with the previous year's administration. Mm. The previous year's administration, that's the Buhari administration. <laughs> but that now there is a change of leadership. That the problem in our country is leadership. But that under his watch. Yes things will be different. Yeah. So that's also committing himself uh, to making things different in some leadership areas uh, that he talked about. And that there will be hurdles, certainly, but that he will <coughs> deal with those hurdles. So will the Nigerians abroad uh, listen to him and on the basis of his promises come back home? And he says, well, he didn't get to where he is today uh, so easily. He had to fight for it. Well, I'm sure he's still fighting for it, as uh, indications uh, I pointed out that many Nigerians who must have attended that event will simply say in their minds that, well, the responsibility of government is to provide an enabling environment for talents to thrive. And if President Tinubu has made that commitment, then he has to fulfill it in real terms and address the challenge of the Nigerian factor. Look, in this country, every president that comes to power goes abroad you know, to go and woo Nigerians abroad, talents in the diaspora to come and join in, the, in, in building Nigeria. But when people come here, they, they encounter the Nigerian factor. 
if they want to do the right thing, they will suddenly discover that here, the same kind of standards that they experienced while they were abroad, you know, they, they will not meet them here. Mm -hmm. So on that basis, many Nigerians have even done a reverse journey and returned to where they came from. So you have to give the people hope. Oh, well, mm. All right. All right, then let's uh, take our final story. There have been mixed reactions trailing the statement released by the presidency after President Bola Ahmed Tinubu rang the closing bell of the Nasdaq stock market on Wednesday. Renowned for its large selection of technology stocks, the Nasdaq stock market is ranked second globally on the list of stock exchanges by market capitalization of shares traded behind the New York Stock Exchange. Well, special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Ajuri Ngalali, in a statement on Thursday, said the Nasdaq invitation was in honor of Tinubu's determined global push to aggressively attract foreign direct investment into Nigeria, and that Tinubu was the first African president to ever receive the honor. Well, the presidency has come under fire as an other African uh, leader. Former Tanzanian president, Jakai Kikwete, rang the Nasdaq closing bell 12 years ago on September 21st, 2011. People also come in closer home. Celebrated pharmacist Professor Isa Odidi rang the Nasdaq opening bell in October 2010. Well, former Nigerian president, good luck, Janata, rang the New York Stock Exchange, which is ranked first globally on the list of stock exchanges in September 2013. While well, DJ Copy, the famous daughter of Nigerian billionaire Femi Otedola, also rang the New York Stock Exchange opening bell in September 2019. What can I say? The presidency, we have to find a way to do some research before, you know, putting out these uh, statements you, you online. See, you see, we should stop embarrassing ourselves. This is bad. <laughs> How can somebody go and write such a thing without even fact checking? Chaka quickly rang the thing. And that's that. And you see the way the way everybody is tooting the own. This is something DJ Copy has even rang. Even a higher stock market and all of that. What is that? Just like we deal with the Dubai something. Yeah. That CNN has now come out to say that the Dubai Authority didn't say anything around that. And like they say with immediate effect. So today they've not refuted CNN. So what is happening? <laughs> What's happening? What's all this? I What's all this? I think it's quite unfortunate that yeah. the misrepresentation of facts yeah. is now blighting what should have been a glory Lies moment. Lies and propaganda. Yes. What like, should have like... been a glory moment for the president. You know, um, reading the Nasdaq bill for many CEOs, leaders, an opportunity for immense brand exposure. And for the president in his first, well, three, um, over, a little over 100 days in office, it's a statement for him to also ring that bell. That statement ought to have just ended there. We're mm. proud to, you know, the fact that the president was invited by Nasdaq to ring the closing bell. And that's a, you know, that's a win for him in many instances. So I think, like you mentioned, the task of a presidential spokesperson is an arduous one indeed. And before statements are put out there, there are so many platforms that you can use to fact check that mm. everybody will check your statement. Yes. But congratulations anyway <laughs> congratulations to the president and to Nigeria. Fact check. Google. 
The Oracle, that's what you call it. <laughs> I hear it. Much ado about the ringing of bells. Yeah, I know. But the, the main concern, of course, is that, okay, Ajirin Gelale got it wrong there. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, um, you know, as uh, who was saying that, Simon Lalong, mm -hmm. uh, saying the government is just trying to set you down. Allow the government to set you down. Oh, should allow them, okay. <laughs> so, because I see some people have been saying uh, Yuri Ngalale is now like uh, Lai Muhammad, <laughs> you know, baby. I mean, uh, let's cut him some slack. We should. Uh, yes. He, 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 I'm, I'm, the sure, I'm sure. I'm the, sure. Oh, I'm sure. Yes, he's the grandfather. I'm sure he got, he, he got your mercy. <laughs> You well, know. I mean, it's not me. So, as we're just uh, re we're here to report the facts, yes, isn't it? I'm sure yeah. you've got the message. You'll Absolutely. be more careful going forward. <laughs> well, all right. I, I plead on his behalf. Okay, as an ancestor. No please, 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 please. We also like to plead on Ajuri's behalf. Okay, please. no problem. Uh, he's a, no problem. He was asleep. And we are not but get the, the facts. Phone, no. Get the facts right next time. Pure and simple. Well, all right. Right. Yeah. I'm sure he's watching. Or he knows he's been told already. Well, all Thank right. you very much. Congratulations to President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, as always. He's been doing well. Well, I'd like to thank you all for your great analysis, as always, on What's Trending. Well, that's all I have for you on What's Trending today. I'll see you all next week. <laughs>